Praise God. God is good all the time. God is good. Well, after service today, you've got time to go to Walmart and get some milk and eggs. Since we're having some, some snow and cold weather coming in, so uh, I'm sure there will be a run today. If just the mention of snow scares Kentucky people, doesn't it? We head to Walmart. Amen. Well, I noticed when all the veterans stood today that, uh, Tina, you were the only lady in the group. Yeah, I don't think I saw any other ladies. My wife commented, Tina is the only lady veteran. So, Tina, God, God bless you. Was there a Susan? Susan, are you a veteran? Or she's not, yeah. Are you a veteran, Susan? You're not? Oh, you're, you were just standing back there. Okay. Well, you're, 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 you're in the army of God, aren't you? <laughs> okay. I did see you standing back there, but I knew that you were an usher too, so, but I just wanted to make sure. But anyway, God bless all of you veterans for your service and, and for the sacrifices that you made to, to keep us free and to, to enable us to enjoy the blessings of living in this great country, the United States of America. You know, there's a lot of people that say a lot of bad things about America now, but I want to tell you, it's the greatest land in the world. God bless America, land that I love. So let's never knock America. Yeah, it's got its problems, sure, we all do, we're people, but God bless America. People want to come to America, don't they? Because of all that we have to offer, and it's because of you veterans that you've made this possible, and we just bless you and we thank you for your service. Thank you again so very much. Well, <clears throat> are you ready? Are you ready? Well, if you're not ready, I want you to get ready. Because this is what God is speaking into my spirit that I'm to share with you this morning. That He wants us to get ready. I was talking to Rick Druitz this morning, and Rick has had a little leg injury. And uh, he's been doing some volunteer work. In, uh, at a ministry in Shelbyville, and he's been feeling better. The leg is healing, and he went back, tried to go back to work this week, and the guy sent him home because he saw that he was limping just a little bit. And he said, Rick, you don't need to take a chance and, and damage that leg any further. And I thought it noteworthy, Rick, in his closing remarks to me, said, I wonder if I'll be able to run the court and dunk like I used to. Will I be able to run the court and dunk like I used to? And just out of my mouth, you know, it's, it's amazing the way the Lord speaks. Just out of my mouth, I said, Rick, yes, get ready. Get ready. How many would love to see Rick run the court and dunk again? Huh? <laughs> like, he did, like he did in those days a while back when he played for Adolph Rupp at Rupp Arena and a little bit for Joe Hall. Rick, we're just going to believe God to heal you and, and just get ready for that healing, okay? Just get ready for what God has in store. But God, friends, God has just been speaking into my heart this week about, uh, about getting ready, about getting ready, about having a, a, a heart of anticipation regarding what God wants to do. And I think sometimes we get so bound up in, in, the, in the negatives and the things that we see that maybe aren't to our liking, and we get focused on that, and we forget that we serve a powerful God, an all-powerful, mighty God who is able to do anything that needs to be done. And, and, and all God wants us to do is simply to reach out to Him in faith and to believe that His promises are true and that if God is for us, then who can be against us? And, and God has just been speaking into my spirit this week about He's wanting us as a people to get ready. He's wanting us as a church to get ready. He's wanting us to have a heart and a spirit of anticipation as to the things that God wants to do for us and I believe is going to do. 
I, I don't say this lightly. I don't say this with just, you know, a, a, a trite statement. But I believe, friends, that God indeed wants us to look to Him as the author and the finisher of our faith and to get ready, to get ourselves ready for what He wants to do and what I believe He is going to do for us as we continue reaching out to Him and taking care of His business. So I want you to turn your Bibles with that in mind. I want you to turn to Joshua chapter 3 this morning. And I want to read some verses. We're going to be looking probably at this whole chapter. And don't get scared because I'm not going to be talking about every single verse. But I I do want us to look at this chapter today because I believe it entails what God wants to do for us. You know, the Bible is filled with examples for us that if we will follow, they bring encouragement. They bring help. They bring strength to us. This this Bible is as up to date as tomorrow's newspaper. And if we will simply let the Word of God speak to us, it will challenge us to be the people that God wants us to be. So look at verse number 1 of Joshua chapter 3. Then Joshua rose early in the morning, and they set out from the acacia grove and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and lodged there before they crossed over. So it was that after three days that the officers went throughout the camp. And I I was reading that verse this morning. I've been looking at this chapter quite a bit this week. But I was looking at this verse this morning, and I was wondering in my spirit, what were they doing for those three days? What were they doing? The Bible doesn't tell us, but it just says, after three days, the officers went through the camp. I have to believe they they were praying they were, they were seeking God. They realized what was ahead of them, and they needed some time to process what was happening. And I have to believe they were just simply waiting on God. How many know they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength? They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I have to believe, even though the Bible doesn't say it, I have to believe that they were simply waiting on God, seeking God for direction, knowing what was about to come as they were going into the promised land. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall sit out from your place to go after it. Now remember, up to this point, God had led his people by the cloud by day and the fire by night. All through the wilderness, it was the cloud leading them during the day and the fire at night. Whenever the cloud stopped, they stopped. Whenever the fire stopped, they stopped. When it moved, they moved. And so God was providing leadership to them through the cloud and the fire. But now that is changing. Now... They are looking to the ark. When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall sit out from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about 2,000 cubits by measure. Don't come near it, that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. I look at that verse, I read it, and I reread it, and I see the leadership of God for His people. God is providing leadership, continuing leadership to the children of Israel. He led them for 40 years with the cloud and the fire, and now they're just on the verge of crossing the Jordan into the promised land, and now he's taking it a step further, and he is providing leadership through the Ark of the Covenant, which represented his physical presence among the people. They were told to remain at a distance from the Ark, and I believe the reason for that was that God wanted them to understand the sacredness of his leadership. He wanted them to understand how sacred this this time was. And he wanted them to, to respect the ark, to respect his leadership. I believe, friends, we need to learn again today anew and afresh to respect the leadership of the Holy Spirit. If there was ever a day the church needs to respect the leadership of God and of His Spirit, it is today. We today at this juncture in our church life, we need to respect the leadership of the Holy Spirit. 
If we don't have the leadership of the Holy Spirit, if He isn't leading us, then we've got problems. We're seeking God's direction here for new leadership. We're seeking God for His purpose to be fulfilled in this church. And we need to follow the Lord. We need to follow the leadership of the Holy Spirit. God is providing that leadership here. I've been reading a book this week, and it's just breaking down the... uh, the, the 23rd Psalm, and it's been such a, a blessing and such a refreshing time for me uh, to look at this Psalm that all of us know and to read it and see the hand of God and to see the leadership of our great shepherd. The Bible says the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. He leads me beside still waters. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His namesake. The Lord provides leadership for His people. And the Lord is providing leadership for us as a body even now. He's providing that leadership. And Joshua said, you haven't passed this way before. This is virgin territory. This is a new day for you. And you need to follow my direction. You've not passed this way before. You need to look to me. And church, we need to look to him today. Verse 5. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves. For tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. And that's the basis for my thought this morning. Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. In other words, he's saying to Israel what I believe he's saying to us. Get ready. Get ready. Are you ready? Are you really ready? If you're not ready, you need to start getting ready because God is about to do wonders among his people. God is about to do wonders In His church, we need to get ready. We need to get prepared. And we're going to see the hand of God work in our lives in ways that I believe are just going to amaze us as we see what God is doing in His people and in His church. Father, I'm asking today, Lord, as I I speak for these next few moments, that You would grant Your blessing and Your favor upon us. God, I am nothing without Your help. I am nothing without your, Your ability. God, I pray that I would be able to speak the things that you've placed upon my heart for this morning and that you would enable the people before me to hear and receive this word today. And may it profit all of us, we pray. I ask this in Jesus' name. And his people said, Amen. God is about to do a mighty thing for Israel as they prepare to take the land of Canaan. They have wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Now they're on the verge of crossing over the river of Jordan to take the land of promise or to begin the process of taking the land of promise. And God is speaking through Joshua, the new leadership. And He says, I want you to tell my people that they are to sanctify themselves. That they are to prepare themselves because I am about to do something wonderful in the midst of my people. And friends, the thing I want you to notice here as I, as I preach this message to you this morning, there are two basic points that I want to give to you this morning. The first one is this, that preparation always precedes blessing. Preparation always precedes blessing. How many today can truthfully say, Pastor Mark, I I want the blessing of God to be upon my life? Yeah, come on, raise your hand. It's okay to raise your hand. I I really, Pastor Mark, I I want the blessing of God to rest upon my life. You know, that to me, that's a given. We all want that. We all should want the, the favor and the blessing of God in everything that we do. How many want the blessing and the favor of God to rest upon our church in in all that we're dealing with and the decisions that that we're making and this process that we're going through? Of course, we want the blessing of God. And I believe, friends, that preparation always precedes blessing. He said to the people of Israel here, I want you to sanctify yourselves. I want you to consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord is going to do wonders among you. And we need to understand, friends, that as we consecrate ourselves, as we sanctify ourselves before the Lord, as we set ourselves apart to the glory of God, 
then that opens a door for God to do things that, that will just blow our minds. God is looking for a consecrated people. God is looking for a dedicated people. God is looking for a people who are going after Him, who want His will to be done. That's their passion. That's their longing. That's their desire. They want the will of God to be done above all else. Because of what it leads into. Whenever we seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, it's amazing what the Lord adds to us. He's looking for our commitment. He's looking for our consecration. He's looking for our dedication. And when we give that, we actually enlarge our borders. They're getting ready to go in to the promised land, the land that the people of God had been promised since Abraham. They're finally going to go into this land. They've made mistakes. Yeah, they've dropped the ball. They wandered in the wilderness. They've been through all of it. But here they are now, just on the verge of entering into the greater promises of God. And Joshua is saying, let's not blow it. Let's not drop the ball this time, but let's sanctify ourselves. Let's consecrate ourselves. Let's commit ourselves to the Lord because the Lord is going to do great things among us. And and church, please forgive me this morning, but this is just what I'm sensing in my spirit today. Can I just be honest with you? Can I just be transparent with you? I really believe that that's what God is saying to every one of us individually and on a corporate level here at Trinity Chapel. I believe that God is saying, I don't care what your past has been. I don't care where you are now. If you will sanctify yourself and set yourselves apart for my glory and for my honor, just stand back because I am still God. I'm a God of power and a God of might. And there's nothing impossible with me. And if you will just trust me, just just see the wonders that I'm going to do for you. Just see the greatness that I am going to reveal to my people. But God wants us to be committed to Him. He wants us to be dedicated to Him. He wants us to be consecrated to Him because preparation always precedes blessing. It's here. Sanctify yourselves. Get ready. You're about to embark on a great journey. Get ready for what I'm going to do because tomorrow I'm going to do wonderful things among you. At Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 19, the people were told to prepare themselves before the Lord came and talked to them. They were told to get ready. And on the third day, God came down in a dense cloud and He talked to the people. Achan took things that were devoted to destruction and it caused the defeat of Ai. This was the next city after after Jericho. He caused the defeated Ai. God had given such a wonderful victory at Jericho. And now they they face Ai and think, oh, this this is going to be so easy for us. But Ai became difficult when Achan took things devoted to destruction. Joshua 7.13 says, Go consecrate the people. Tell them, consecrate yourselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord says, that which is devoted is among you. O Israel, you cannot stand against your enemies until you remove it. God says, I want devotion from my people. I want devotion. I want consecration. I want commitment. I want sin to be removed from the lives of my people. If you're here this morning and you've got sin in your life, you will never have the full blessing of God as long as that sin is there. It needs to be dealt with through the blood of Jesus. If you raise your hand, you said, I want the blessing of God. Well, that's great. That's well and good. But if we're walking in in, in, in sin, if we're living in perpetual sin, then that sin has to be removed. It has to be dealt with. We need to be consecrated fully and completely to God for His further blessings to come in our lives. When God is about to do something through an individual, He calls for consecration, doesn't He? 
When God is about to do something through a person, He calls for consecration. When He's about to do something through a people, He calls for consecration. 1 Samuel 16 and 5, Samuel replied, Yes, in peace I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. He said, Consecrate yourselves. What happened out of that? God chose David to be the next king of Israel. Because there was consecration, because there was commitment, because there was a setting apart of a life to God. And friends, that's what God is looking for today. He wants us to commit ourselves fully and completely to Him. And when we do that, we are saying, Lord, I want to get ready for what you want to do in my life. I want to open myself up, Lord, for what you want to do in my life. I want to be totally and completely available to you. Remove any sin from me. Remove anything of of self and flesh from me so that your perfect will can be done in me because, Lord, I want your greater blessings to be upon my life. I want what you have in store for me, and I'm going to get ready for it. I said, I'm going to get ready for it. I'm going to get prepared for it. I'm looking forward to it. I'm anticipating it. I want nothing between my soul and my Savior. I want to be totally and completely submitted to the will of God. I believe today, friends, that God wants you and I to live our lives in service to Him. He's looking for people who will live their lives in service to Him. But in order to see that happen, we've got to live our lives in readiness for what God wants to do. Sanctify yourselves. Get ready. Get prepared. Because blessing always Uh, uh, preparation always precedes blessing. And if you will prepare, if you will give yourself to me and consecrate yourself to me, it will be amazing what I will do through you. And it will be amazing what I will do through my people. Because that's the way God works. That's the way God works. I've always seen in my own life's experience that when I consecrate myself to the purpose of God, things just go a lot more smoothly. Yeah, I know it's simple. I found that when I will just simply say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done. Lord, I want you to be glorified in my life. Take anything out of my life that, that isn't right, that isn't proper, so that the blessings can come, so that you can use me. I found so many times, friends, when I will simply do that, that's when I open the door for God's greater blessings to come in my life. And I believe that God wants greater blessings in your life. I believe that God wants greater blessings in this church's life than we can imagine. I'm not getting ready for the worst. I'm getting ready for the best. I'm not getting ready for bad stuff. I'm getting ready for good stuff because I believe that God's got some good stuff that He wants to do in your life as you commit to Him. And I believe that God's got some good stuff He wants to do in this church as we commit to Him as a church body. And I believe we're doing it. So I'm not... I'm not offering this message today in the way of a a correction. I hope you don't perceive it that way. But I'm offering this message today in the way of an encouragement because as we press in to the greater things of God, as we allow Him to be Lord of our lives, as we allow Him to be Lord of His church, that's when we open the door for Him to do stuff that is totally and completely amazing that will blow you out of the water. And that's what God wants to do. Because preparation always precedes blessing. But there's something else that is so very simple that I want you to get. And it just dovetails right in with the first statement. Blessing always follows preparation. Blessing always follows preparation. Look, let me read verse 6. Then Joshua spoke to the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and cross over before the people. 
So they took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, This day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel, that you may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. See that? God is placing His blessing and His approval upon the new leadership. God is, is blessing the new leadership because they are consecrating themselves to Him, because they are committing themselves to Him. God is blessing the new leadership. Moses is no more. Now it's Joshua's turn. It will never be the same now that Moses is gone. We've lost the greatest leader we've ever had. He's been with us through thick and thin. All through this wilderness journey, Moses has been there for us. He's been our help. He's been our mentor. He's been our advisor. All we've ever needed, Moses has been there for us. And now he's dead. He's no longer here. And it will never be the same. But what does God say? I beg to differ. God says... As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. Beloved, can I say that God has not advocated his role of being head of his church? Can I say that God has not advocated his role of being Lord and Savior and Master? He's fully able to take existing leadership And use that leadership to do what needs to be done to get us where we need to be into the greater promises of God. I believe God wants to take us further than we've ever been. I believe God wants to do more than we have done. I believe God has a greater plan and a greater purpose. And we've got to get our focus off of what man can do and upon what God can do. Because He is the head of His church. He is the Lord of His church. Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. God was going to use Joshua just like He has used Moses. And friends, God is going to use leadership coming in here in a way that's going to be God honoring and God glorifying. Are you with me? Are you hearing this? Get ready. Get ready for what God is going to do. So Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here and hear the words of the Lord your God. Verse 10, And Joshua said, By this you shall know that the living God is among you, and that He will without fail, I love this, that He will without fail drive out from you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Jebusites. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth is crossing over before you into the Jordan. God is leading. God is leading. Now therefore take for yourselves twelve men from the tribes of Israel, one man from every tribe, and it shall come to pass as soon as the soles of the feet of the priest who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters... The Jordan, that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, the waters that come down from upstream, and they shall stand as a heap. So it was when the people set out from their camp to cross over the Jordan with the priests bearing the ark of the covenant before the people. And as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan, and the feet of the priest who bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water, for the Jordan overflows all of its banks during the whole time of harvest. I love this, that the waters which came down from upstream stood still and rose in a heap from far away, some 19 miles upstream at Adam and the city that is beside Zaratan. So the waters that went down into the Sea of the Arabah and the Salt Sea or the Dead Sea failed and they were cut off and what happened? The people crossed over opposite Jericho. Blessing, blessing comes after preparation. 
Verse 17, then the priest who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all the people crossed over on dry ground until all the people had crossed completely over the Jordan. God said, you haven't been this way before. You've not been this way before, but if you'll follow me, I will lead you. I will direct you. If you will consecrate yourselves to me, and if you will get ready, I will lead you where you've never been before, and you will cross over. And that's just exactly what they did. It was kind of like another Red Sea experience, wasn't it? Where God was just showing his people, hey, I'm not dead, I'm still alive. Moses may not be here to divide your Red Sea for you, But I've still got plans for you because it's all about me and it's not about man. It's about what I can do for you if you will trust in me and believe in me. And that's what God is saying to you individually today. And that's what he's saying to us as a church. If you will trust me, I will lead you. I will direct you. I will provide for you. I will do what needs to be done in your life. You may not see it now, but trust me. Sanctify yourself. Commit yourself to me. Trust in me, the Lord says, and I will show you wonders of what I can do if I can just have a people that will get on board with what I'm doing. I, I was getting gas this week at Sam's before I get my gas. It's cheaper there for me. And I pulled up at the tank, and I looked over to my left, and I saw this vehicle, and I thought, that, that looks like Scott Brown's car. But there are a lot of those colored Honda passports around, so I wasn't sure. But I said, that looks like Scott Brown's car. And I looked again, and there he stood pumping gas in his car. First time I'd actually seen him since they left. I've talked with him, but I haven't actually seen him. And I, I just called to him, and he turned around, big smile on his face. He, he was always smiling. You know that. Just, to, I know. And he just walked over, and he was so happy. He was, we, were, we were just so happy to see each other and be able to talk for a few minutes. And he asked about the church. He asked how the church was doing, how the people are doing. And he said, I want you to know that I pray for you. That means something, doesn't it, church? I know it's special to you. He said, I'm praying for you. Scott Brown isn't here. He's not here. But he's still praying. And he's still believing. And guess what, friends? God is still in the midst of his people. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help. A very present help. And friends, the God that we're praying to, the God that we're committing to, is going to show Himself strong for this body of believers. We're going to look back and we're going to see the hand of God. We're going to see the favor of God because God is in the process now of bringing it all together in my life and in yours. All He wants us to do is commit to Him. I'm going to tell you, I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. I'm not there yet, but I'm working on it. Several years ago, God spoke to my heart and said, said, Mark, I want to take you to a new level. And I began a season of fasting. And I thought when I got through with that fast, God would just dump it all on me, you know. I would just arrive. It was several days I fasted, and I thought, well, God, I, I'm, I'm doing this, and now I believe that when, when this fast is over, I'm just gonna, all of heaven is going to come down. But it didn't. But you know what? God has been in the process day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year, fulfilling his word because God has his own timetable, and he wants us to trust him. They that trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion that cannot be removed but abides forever and ever. And friends, God is saying, just trust me. Get ready 
for what I want to do in you individually. I don't know where you are in your own relationship with God, but I'll tell you this. If you will do what Israel did and you will sanctify yourself and commit yourself to God, you will see things unfolding in your life that will boggle your mind because God honors consecration. I want that in my own life. And we need it as a church in this journey that we're involved in because we haven't been this way before. Not like this way. Oh, preacher, we've changed pastors before. I know that. But we haven't been this way before. This is a new way. But God is leading us. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Let's see what God has in store. In Isaiah chapter 40, verses 3 through 5, the voice of him that cries in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight. And the rough places, and, and the rough places plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Now I know this is a prophecy about Jesus Christ fulfilled the ministry of John the Baptist. But note what the word says, And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. We must prepare the way for His glory to be revealed. Lord, we want to see Your glory. Are you hungry for the glory of God to be revealed? Lord, we want to see your glory. I want to see your glory in my life. I want to see your greater glory in the church. I'm tired. I'm just going to be frank and forthright. I'm tired in the church world of services where there is no glory. And I'm not talking about a bunch of junk and foolishness either that we attach to Pentecostal worship. I'm not talking about that. I am just talking about I want to see the glory of God in our churches again here in Louisville, Kentucky. Here in the state of Kentucky. Here in the United States. Lord, let your glory be revealed. Lord, let us prepare our hearts to see the glory of God revealed. And I think, friends, God is hearing that cry. We want to make a way for you, Lord. We want to be a highway for you. We want our lives to be a highway so that you can come and visit us. Church, let's get ready. Let's get prepared because God wants to do greater things than we know. Sanctify yourselves. Get ready for tomorrow. The Lord will do great things among you. I want the worship team to come back up here and we're going we're gonna to have prayer together. Amen. God is faithful, and He is all that we need. I want you to stand. Everybody in the building, please. I just want you to stand with me as the worship team comes. I just want us to have a time of personal consecration. I just want us to have a time of of consecrating ourselves to the Lord for His purposes to be revealed in us. I believe God wants to do greater things than we know. 
and we're going to open our hearts to him. We're going to open our hearts to him and let him be Lord. Let him be Lord. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Because God is still on his throne. Amen. Amen. Worship team, just lead us. Right where you are, I just want you to say, Lord, here I am. Right where you are, I just want you to say, Lord, here I am. I'm going to consecrate myself to you. I'm going to commit myself to you. When this new preacher gets here, I'm going to get behind him. Because in getting behind him, I'm getting behind you. In getting behind the new man, I'm getting behind you. And, and I'm going to get behind what God is doing. I'm going to consecrate myself to you. I'm going to do what, whatever it is you're leading me to do. And I'm going to believe that in so doing, you're going to bless the church and the church is going to move forward because God honors obedience. God honors obedience. And if you're not living in obedience today, God can honor that. To obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams. God is calling for our commitment and consecration to Him. And as the worship team leads us right where you are, I want you to say, Lord, I commit myself to you. I commit myself to you. I'm getting ready. I'm getting myself ready for the greater blessings that you have in store. Let's do it as they sing. Let's commit to the Lord. Come and take God. Would you just join hands as we, we're going to close here. Just join hands. Move across the aisle even. Carly had us do this couple of weeks ago and I thought it was great. We're going to pray together. And if you're in this room today and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you're not saved. All you have to do is say, Lord, forgive me, I'm a sinner. Cleanse me of my sin and help me to begin this process of seeing your blessing upon my life in a way that I have not known as I commit myself to you. If that's you today, just commit your life to the Lord right where you stand as we pray together. Let's see what God will do. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray your blessings upon this body of believers. I pray, God, that you would lead us in paths of righteousness for your name's sake. I pray that you would provide the leadership, Lord, to us as we commit ourselves to you individually and as a church body. Lord, show us what you can do Show us the miracles that you can perform. Lord, you can open the flooded sea before us. There, where there seems to be no way to cross, you can open that flooded sea and help us, Lord, to walk across on dry ground into the greater promises of the Lord. God, you have promises that you want to fulfill for us and Lord, we as your people want to be totally and completely submissive to your will for our lives and for this body of believers, for this church. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. You're still on the throne. You're still God. Above you, there's none other. You're still faithful. You're a covenant-keeping God. And we trust in you today, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing as we get ready, as we get ready as we get ready for the best, not the worst, we get ready for the best because you have good things in store. You have good things in store. In Jesus' name. Worship team, lead us as we, as we leave today. God bless you. Thanks for being here. Anybody needs prayer, if you'll come to the front, we'll be happy to pray with you. Whatever your need is, we'll pray. Okay? God bless.